Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer over our children. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation. You have, you have blessed, blessed us with the joy and care of children. children. May, the may the knowledge of you dawn on them. May the, the love of you grow in them. And may, and may the grace of your spirit draw them to you. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, throw down your altar, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone and left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand at the, on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altar, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you sh arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat of Abel Mehola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Ahaziel, Jeshu shall kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. 
Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near, and your lips on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with a heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with a mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. 
But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the true and living God, the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. You of little faith, why did you doubt? It's one of the questions Jesus asks that echoes through the wind and the waves of this particular passage, through the wind and the waves and turbulence of the centuries, and into the wind and waves of our current location, in time and history. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Well, I can think of a few reasons. But before we go down that trail, which is so tempting to do, I might add, it's important to note that this is an example of one of those questions that can have a totally different meaning depending on the way that the question is asked. You of little faith, why did you doubt? This story, at least in my own experience, has often been interpreted as a way to browbeat Christians for doubting. Faith and doubt, it's presented, are like oil and water. They don't mix. But from a different angle, depending on how you ask the question, this story could actually suggest the opposite of that. In this story, we're told that Peter and the disciples are out on their boat, as, had been, as they had probably been a million times before, far away from the shore. The weather was bad, and their boat was groaning under the force of the wind and the waves. The text says that it was early in the morning, more literally translated, that it was in the fourth watch of the night, which meant it would probably have been anywhere between 3 and 6 a.m. So on top of these perilous weather conditions, it was also likely pitch black outside. In these conditions, who wouldn't be afraid? But the thing is, to assume that Peter and the disciples were frightened at this point in the story would be to conflate it with another episode in Matthew's Gospel that came about six chapters earlier. Jesus is already on the boat in that episode, but he's sleeping. It, it's the scenario where the disciples are afraid for their lives, and so they wake Jesus up, begging him to save them. But in today's text, we're not told that the disciples are afraid until they see Jesus walking towards them in the midst of the storm, in the midst of their darkness, in the deep recesses of the night when they thought they were all alone on the water. 21st century Christians often imagine water to be a symbol of our baptism, and indeed it is a very powerfully beautiful one. 
But in the ancient Hebrew tradition, water symbolized something far more sinister. From water flooding the earth and killing all life except for Noah and his companions on the ark, to the marginal escape the Israelites made through the parted waters of the Red Sea just before they collapsed to envelop the Egyptian army behind them, waters represented something swallowing, something so vast and so deep and so inescapable that it would have taken an intervention from a deity to save humanity from its darkness. In an article entitled In Praise of Darkness, excerpted from her book, Learning to Walk in the Dark, Barbara Brown Taylor writes, darkness is shorthand for anything that scares me, that I want no part of, either because I am sure that I do not have the resources to survive it, or because I do not want to find out. The absence of God is in there, along with the melting of polar ice caps, the suffering of children, and the nagging question of what it will feel like to die. If I had my way, I would eliminate everything from chronic back pain to the fear of the devil from my life and the lives of those I love if I could just find the right night lights to leave on. I wonder if at the sight of Jesus, who they imagined might be a ghost, were fumbling frantically all of a sudden for the right nightlight to switch on, suddenly aware of just how dark it was out there. I wonder how often we suddenly snapped out of our autopilot mode by moments of darkness that puncture the airwaves of the news find ourselves scrambling for the right nightlight to turn on. If we could just leave the nightlight on, maybe we wouldn't live in a world where global pandemics threaten everything we've come to understand as life and safety and security. If we could just leave the right nightlight on, perhaps we wouldn't still be swimming in the dark waters of systemic racism that terrorize people of color. If we could just find a nightlight somewhere, anywhere, maybe random explosions and hurricanes and floods and natural disasters wouldn't unseat us when we are least expecting it. Ironically, this face-to-face -face encounter with the wild and raging waters isn't what sets terror in the hearts of the disciples. It was not the darkness of the threatening waters, but rather the fact that Jesus stepped into that darkness with them and called them forth in a different way. It was the realization that some presence from beyond this veil of tears, whether a ghost or as they soon discovered was actually Jesus, would show up in the middle of the night which startled them into the fear that comes with greater awareness. That Jesus could and did reveal the power of deity defying the storm as he literally tramples on its waves with his feet, unwavering as he enters into the dark night with them. Although there are accounts of Jesus walking on water in the Gospels of Mark and John, the account in Matthew is the only one that mentions that Peter ventures out onto the water too. And this is more significant when you pair it with the fact that Matthew's gospel is also the only gospel that contains the Greek word ekklesia, which means gathering or assembly, the word that we translate as the church. One of those two times in Matthew's gospel is two chapters after today's text, which is actually the subject of next week's gospel, where in Matthew 16, Jesus says to Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter, on a grand scale, represents the foundation of the church, both in its infancy and throughout the centuries to present day. Peter is the one to whom Jesus says, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? Peter, the rock of the church, has only a little faith, perhaps only the size of a mustard seed, but faith enough to step out of the boat 
and into the darkness and the waves to meet Jesus there. In our own present darkness, will the church follow Peter's lead? Will, where, will we be startled into the awareness that in the midst of our present darkness, Jesus is walking toward us, beckoning us to come? Will we be people of little mustard seed-like faith, willing to step out into the darkness towards Jesus? Peter steps out into the waves, and even though he started to sink because of how scary and preposterous it was to be doing what he was doing, he channeled that fear to motivate that little fledgling mustard seed faith within him to move toward Jesus, to demand, in fact, that Jesus invite him to come out onto the water with him. And then he moved toward him when the invitation came. Fear and doubt and all. In her article in Praise of Darkness, Barbara Brown Taylor continues to write that when despite all my best efforts, the lights have gone off in my life, literally or figuratively, take your pick, plunging me into the kind of darkness that turns my knees to water, nonetheless, I have not died. The monsters have not dragged me out of bed and taken me back to their lair. The witches have not turned me into a bat. Instead, I have learned things in the dark that I could never have learned in the light. Things that have saved my life over and over again so that there really is only one logical conclusion. I need darkness as much as I need light. In darkness, we find that the Jesus who called Peter to be his disciple one day when he was out fishing, called Peter also in the dead of night when he was far away from shore. And just as Jesus called Peter the rock of the church, he calls us today the current embodiment of the church built on Peter's witness. We learn to recognize him not as a ghost, but as the Christ, the redeemer of all that is and ever has been dark. In darkness, we learn to come together as a community and refuse to let the fear that creeps up in us motivate us to contribute to it, but rather taking Peter's lead, motivate the little mustard seed sized faith in us to mobilize. In the swirling chaos of darkness, are we afraid of the darkness itself? or of the fact that Jesus comes to us not outside of the darkness, not eradicating the darkness, but right in the middle of the darkness, beckoning us out of our safety nets, out of our life rafts, out of our comfort zones. O oh, ye of little faith, so it was said to the rock of the church, and so it is said to us, this is not a story that disparages doubt, nor the real fear that comes when darkness closes in. It's a story of hope that pierces the darkness, inviting us to step out of our beaten and battered boats and reach out for the hand of our Savior, who knows us, who calls us by name, who goes before us and meets us in the darkness and provides a way where there doesn't seem to be a way, who takes our fledgling, mustard seed sized faith, our little faith, and grows it into the kingdom of God, planting seeds of light and life wherever it goes. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We glory in God's name through the offering of our prayers and petitions, responding, Hear us, good Lord. For the will to discover God's word dwelling in our hearts, finding expression through our lips, and revealing hope through the generosity, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For a renewed commitment to righteousness and peace, that we may join with the leaders of the nations in seeking ways to promote harmony in warring lands and mutual respect across cultures, races, and languages, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For creative ways to express the faith, drawing upon the jewels of our tradition and using our hearts and minds to proclaim Christ's message to those of little faith or who have no faith at all, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. That the summer months may provide opportunities for rest and refreshment so that we may be rejuvenated for the challenges ahead, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For medical personnel who volunteer their services in foreign lands and amongst the most needy of the world, that we may lift our voices in praise for the good news they bring to others, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For those who have died and reside in the tomb of death, that Christ, who broke the chains of death, will bring them to eternal life, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Ever increasing in faith, we continue our prayers. Wherever you are this morning, I invite you now to offer whatever other prayers or concerns or thanksgivings are on your hearts this morning, either silently or aloud. For whom or what else shall we pray this day? A prayer during the pandemic. Generous God, fill us with compassion and concern for others, young and old, that we may look after one another in these challenging days. Bring healing to those who are sick with the virus and be with their families. May those who have died rest in your eternal embrace. Comfort their family and friends. Strengthen and protect all medical professionals caring for the sick and all who work on our medical facilities. Give wisdom to leaders in health care and governance that they may make the right decisions for the well-being of people. We pray in gratitude for all those in our country who will continue to work in the days ahead in so many fields of life for the sake of us all. Bless them and keep them safe. O God of creation and life, we place ourselves in your protection. May the mantle of your peace enfold us this day and tomorrow. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God, God of all mercy, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John's and our service of digital worship this morning. Wherever you are, I, I offer and extend to you a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us and being a part of our community. A couple of announcements before we move on to our service of spiritual communion. We are wrapping up our book study from the Christina Cleveland book, Disunity in Christ, next Sunday on the 16th of August. We're going to be discussing the 10th and final chapter of the book. It'll be at 5.30 and uh, on Zoom, the link will be in your email. If you haven't joined us for the earlier discussions or even read the book, but you're interested in sort of the wrap up of what we've been talking about, please feel free to join us. You are absolutely welcome to do so. Uh, for the rest of the month of August, we're, we're slowing down quite a bit. Uh, dinner, drinks, and discussion, the Wednesday night group, um, as well as uh, our Bishop Committee member, Randall Walker's uh, COVID support class on mindfulness. Both of those things are taking a break for the month of August and will start back up in September. Um, I will actually be on uh, taking some time off on the 17th through the 31st, but watch your email uh, for information on um, how to get in contact with us if you have any sort of a pastoral emergency. In the meantime, I'm still offering vir uh, virtual blessings. If there's anything in your life coming up, a birthday or an anniversary, or something in particular that you are worried about and you'd like a prayer or excited about and you would like uh, a blessing, please reach out to me either by phone or email and let me know. I'd be happy to set up a time to offer you a blessing or a prayer. As we move into the offertory, I want to remind you that you uh, can still keep up your pledges online at stjohnslaverne.org and there's a PayPal link there that you can donate online or you can still send in your checks to the church. Um, we have been so blessed and um, sustained by your generosity, especially in, in these last four months of wild uncertainty. And we could not have done it without each and every one of your incredibly generous, uh, prayerful gifts. And so please, please do continue to do that if you are able. Um, we, are, we are so grateful for that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we may be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and 
and ever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. And remembering particularly our own church community of St. John's, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption you won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given us. Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into our hearts. As though you have already come, we embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in the right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness, and in the power of your gracious might, overcome every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the great mystery who is beyond our understanding, but is known to us in the Christ who created us and who loves us and who walks this way with us, keep us in peace and bless us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>